there are times when a moment can seem like an age. One of them, now happened to Vanati. She closed her eyes, prayed to Durga Parmshwari, and twirled in the Atkukur stream for a few seconds. Yet they appeared to her for ages. Then her eyes opened as a great shock shook her composure. She learned that the shock was caused by a roof drain hitting the root of a riverside tree. So when the roof caved in, luckily half of Vanati's body was caught in the bent tree branches. So she escaped without crashing into the roots of the tree. Sensing her position, she gripped the branches tightly. The eddies of the flood caught her legs and pulled her at high speed. It was as if the legs would be crushed by that speed. Even the sari she was wearing seemed to be pulling her and leaving her in the flood. At that time Vanati had an amazing spirit and courage that came from nowhere. Gritting her teeth, she got up with all her might and jumped up onto the tree branch. She sat snugly in a comfortable spot on a big branch that split into two branches above the swaying thin branches. She twisted the sari threads and squeezed out the water. Then I heard the sound of rushing water. Just before, before she closed her eyes, she remembered the crocodile she had seen. She bent down and looked around. At first, only the scene of the crocodile's tail hitting the water was seen. Most of the crocodile's body was hidden by the broken and scattered parts of the roof of the car she had climbed. Little by little the crocodile wriggled and wriggled with the help of its tail and freed itself completely from those roof parts, the crocodile opened its mouth wide to show its joy. Looking at Vanati, it said, Come, come. You must fall into my mouth anyway. It seemed to say. Vanati too was excited thinking about how she had survived. Oko. Are you saying that? Are you saying that you will swallow me up? You crocodile. Neither your arm line nor your tail line will work for me. You are useless even showing your teeth. Don't trust me for your hunger. Go look for someone else. Vanati spoke to the crocodile. Hearing that voice, the crocodile started staring at her with its two terrifying eyes. Vanati Oko. Looks like your Sabal isn't leaving you. After saying that, she looked around. Her situation seemed a bit alarming. The branches of the big tree bent over the water. But there were no such low branches on the side of the bank. Descending through the undergrowth, there was a crocodile guarding the root with its roots. Leaping from the bent branches towards the river, the eddies of the sink surrounded her, waiting to drag her down into the underworld. Staring at that huge vortex for a while made me feel dizzy. Thinking, there is no harm in the branches being high on the bank side, we can somehow manage to jump, she got up and walked through the branches to get to the other side. Her lower body was already in the water for a long time and her legs were numb. When he tried to stand up, his legs were shaking. Chi Chi. Legs. What's gotten into you? After saying that, Vanatha sat down again. Who has more patience? Crocodile or Tanaka? Meanwhile, Vanatha was startled hearing Gayendra's screams. The elephant, which had just crossed the river and climbed the bank to the west, was coming back. At the same time, she noticed a boat coming along the bank of the river. There were two people in that boat. Yes, yes, one of the two was a disciple of the astrologer, another one is Flower Tube. In the end, should Punk Yukula come to save him and take him? The boat came under the tree. Pungazali saw Vanatha sitting on a tree branch. Laughing, Princess. You have found a good place to hide, come down quickly. Do you know who is coming on top of that elephant? She asked. The truth suddenly dawned on Vanati's mind. But to confirm it, don't know? Who? She asked. It is he whom you set out in search of. It is the prince, said Punguzali. Vanati watched for a few moments as Atanga came on top of the elephant in utter amazement. It was only when he came near that he was sitting on a branch that seemed very unlucky. She looked down, thinking that as per Pungazali's idea, she had to get into her boat. At that moment she saw that the boat could not stand under the tree due to the speed of the flood and was moving. She also saw Punghuali jumping off the boat not wanting to go with it. 
Oh what is this? Didn't this girl notice the horrible crocodile lying next to her, what? In a moment, 19,000 thoughts rose up and stirred in Vanati's heart. A few words came out of her mouth. Crocodile. Only that fell into the ear of Pungazali. She looked back. Yes, not long ago, a huge crocodile was splitting its mouth open for her. When Bunguzali looked back, the crocodile swung its tail and hit the water. Punghuali is so brave. She has overcome many dangers. But what to do with only courage in front of a crocodile that is splitting its mouth ten feet away? Karen escapes death. If you don't survive in a second, you have to go into the crocodile's mouth. How to survive? It's time to board the boat again. Thinking like this Punghuali jumped into the water. The boat had gone some distance by then. The astrologer's disciple decided that the boat could not be stopped at that place and went a little further down the coast intending to keep it aside. He did not notice the dangerous condition of the flower pot. Jumping in to catch the boat, Punghuali found the onshore eddy of the Kaveri flood more dangerous than the raging sea. The momentum of the vortex pulled her downward. She felt the crocodile start moving behind her to catch her. At this point the title of her sari got caught in the bent tree branches making her position more precarious. Vanati, who was sitting on the western branch, saw all this. The resentment that the flower girl had towards her and the vow she had made due to her cruel words just before, appeared in her mind and disappeared in a flash as she threw her hand and fell into the water thinking that she would not give up on herself. Also, when the woman rescued Pani Selvara from the sea and took her to Sudamani Viharam, the Chola nation and herself remembered the debt of gratitude she owed to her. There he is coming on an elephant. If this crocodile is caught in his mouth before he arrives, what will his mind strive for? What will he think of himself? Is it not with the intention of saving herself if she goes to see that she continues to come and face this risk? So many thoughts appeared in Vanati's mind within a hundredth of the time it took Furnyar to study here. Saying Vayovka Manovka was just a word back then. Of all the speeds, the speed of thought is the fastest. At the time of thinking like this, Vanatha had decided what her duty was. A branch came down from the western branch and she stretched her arms down to lay on it. She grabbed the flower girl's hair. Punghuali looked up. She did not try to escape from Vanati's grip. She held out one hand. Vanati now held that hand. She started pulling up the pipe. Punghuali rose from the flood by grasping a tree branch with her other hand. She also jumped on the branch where Vanatha was. The branch bent as it could not support the two men. Punghuali also tried to climb up. Her feet tripped in the effort. The next moment she was hanging between a tree branch and the flood of the river. Only one of her hands was tightly held by Vanatha's two hands. It took some time for the crocodile to come out from among the roots of the tree. Now it is out. It opened its mouth wide again as it looked at the figure hanging from the branch. Punghuali's body and life were swaying. Vanatha's slender arms seemed to collapse under the weight of Punghuali's diamond body. Her heart throbbed with the thought that at any moment the flower would slip from her hand and fall into the crocodile's mouth. If such an accident happened, then she would never be able to look up to the prince's face. It is better that when the flower falls, she also falls and dies. That's how it should be done. The elephant is approaching. Prince comes upon it. Will these arms have the strength to hold on to the flower pot until he comes and saves it? The elephant came to the river bank and stopped under a tree. It cracked again and the crocodile looked back at the sound. Whatever was thinking again went and lay down among the roots of the tree. Vanati also looked at the elephant as she bent over the tree branch. She also looked at the person on top of it. Yes, he is a prince. Pani Selvara. Elephants. Elephants. Save these demon women today as you saved the baby birds the other day. She said in a soft voice that only she could hear. Cannot, can't take this runner girl anymore. A moment's delay will cause the arms to fall off the shoulder straps by themselves. Dad. Her name is Pungazali. 
But what does she weigh? Isn't it like a body made of iron? Elephant! Elephant! Won't you come soon? Pungaze Lai screamed. Hearing this, Vanati thought that the crocodile had caught her. Unspeakable horror filled her mind. She closed her eyes tightly. The weight that gripped her arms and pulled her down grew heavier. She closed her eyes thinking that it was the crocodile that was pulling the flower tube and tried to hold her tighter and lift her up. Let go. Vanati. Let go. The prince's voice sounded sweet in his ears. She let go of her hand, not knowing what she was doing. The weight that had been weighing down her shoulders was lifted. She opened her eyes. She saw Gayendran swinging the flower pot and dropping it on the bank. Pungujali's eyes were closed. She must have squealed like that when the elephant's chant rolled over her. Similarly, Vanathi remembered that she had fainted after screaming once. She was amazed to think that she was not afraid and did not lose her sanity, even though the situation was much more dangerous now. Iliaprati is not here to admire his courage. No harm though. One day he will not know anyway. What is my fate now? Will the prince leave me on top of this tree, taking only the flower pot? If he does that, it will be the right punishment for my stupidity. No, no. Gajarajan's him again reached out to her. Vanatha closed her eyes once again. The next moment she felt lifted from the tree branch and dropped onto the hard ground. When she woke up, she found herself standing on the bank of the river near Pungujali. She hugged the running girl with love and passion that she did not know. Bungazali said in a soft voice, Princess. You saved my life today. I came to save you from drowning in the river. On the contrary, you saved me from the crocodile's mouth. I will never forget this gratitude. Pungujali. I saved you? Didn't that elephant save you and me? Tell him your thanks. Vanatha said. I have no desire for my life. But my aunt has sent me to deliver an urgent message to her rich son. I do not wish to die before I can deliver it. Said Punghuali. Vanati looked up at the one on top of the elephant. Some kind of poisonous excitement was taking hold of her at that moment. Elephant! Elephant! Are you going to take us on your elephant? After hearing that, she smiled.